Welcome to the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast, where we explore how to build freedom through the entrepreneurial process. Our goal is to provide you with the tools and mindset needed to create your lifestyle of independence and flexibility. I'm your host, Ash Whitener, and this is episode 43, Building a Vending Machine Empire, with my guest, Matt Miller, founder and president of School Spirit Vending. Matt comes from the corporate world, but it never satisfied him. Selling his time to someone else just didn't seem like freedom, and he always wanted to be his own boss. One day, a good friend told him about a gumball machine that he recently purchased, which was generating passive income and actually helping to pay his bills. At the time, Matt wasn't doing financially well and decided to take a closer look. That conversation has turned into a 10-year business quest that has helped Matt create a multi-million dollar vending machine business and allowed him to create the lifestyle that he used to only dream of. I was looking for something more and I wanted to have more control of my time and over my finances. Tune in to learn how Matt spent only $100 and was able to create a successful vending machine business, which now only takes a few days per week to maintain. Also, you don't want to miss the part where Matt and I discuss the importance of teaching children entrepreneurship at a young age and why Matt chose to bring his daughters along that day he finally decided to buy his first vending machine, a simple gumball machine. Homeschooling gives children insights which public schools simply cannot and we join Matt on his experiences and journey. Would you like to become an entrepreneur and start building your own lifestyle of flexibility and independence? Are you tired of working for the man every single week in your nine to five job? If so, head on over to our website and subscribe to the weekly newsletter. I'll send you every week our latest interview with a fellow Liberty entrepreneur who is building the lifestyle that he or she chooses, not the lifestyle that chose them. Also, keep up with us on social media by following us on Twitter at Liberty E Podcast and Facebook slash Liberty Entrepreneurs. Show notes are found on our website, libertyentrepreneurs.com, and I hope you enjoy this show. I'm very pleased today to welcome Matt Miller. Matt, thank you so much. Thanks for having me on, Ash. Just uh, excited to be here. Yeah, so I recently met Matt at the Podcast Movement 2016 conference in Chicago, Illinois. That was my first time at that conference, and wow, let me tell you, it was a little bit overwhelming. I had never been around so many podcasters. I had never seen so many microphones in people's faces, and just the energy of that po- that conference was amazing. Matt, was that, have you been to that before? Yeah, I got a chance to go to the one in Fort Worth last year, being that it was just up the road from us about an hour and a half. And man, it, it changed my life. I mean, that's where I really got turned on to to being a podcaster and also, you know, kind of spreading our message uh, via podcasts as well. And uh, so, yeah, great group of people, incredible value as far as information. But talk about a diverse group of people, too. Wow. Man. I sure. mean, any topic you could possibly think of, they were there um, sharing. And, uh, so it was really neat to get a chance to shake hands and, and get a chance to know a bunch of, a bunch of, a, a, you know, new folks. Yeah. It's so amazing. One of the lines that someone said that caught my attention was if there's not a podcast about your passion, then create it because there are literally podcasts about everything. We heard a guy that had a podcast about porn addiction of all things, right? There, there are people out there looking for this content. I walked away just being absolutely amazed by how much high quality content is being generated every single day. And it's available for free. It's amazing. Podcasting is is absolutely the future of audio media. You know, nobody listens to the radio anymore, and we are the future. So, Matt, it's such an interesting place to meet you. I'd like to jump into the theme of my show, which is Liberty Entrepreneurs: How to Build Your Own Personal Freedom. And this resonates deeply with what your philosophy is as well, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, I was the career guy for over 20 years, and 
you know, that's all I had ever been taught when I was, when I grew up, my parents were teachers and, and I had always followed that, you know, go to work, get a good education, get a good job and you'll be taken care of. And of course, as many of us know now, that paradigm has completely changed. But the mindset of most people, in my opinion, around the country has not changed. So most people are still putting all their eggs in that one basket. And, you know, I got done wrong enough times, Ash, to where I finally got fed up with it all. And I was grateful for the opportunity, grateful for, for the chance to, you know, provide for my family in the method and, the, and in the means that a, a career like that does. But I was looking for something more and I wanted to have more control of my time and over, over my finances and, you know, working for somebody else, you know, whenever they're signing the check on the front and you're having to sign it on the back, you know, there's always going to be limitations. And I chose to become the guy in the front instead of the one on the back. Yeah. So let's go back to the beginning because it's a very interesting story how you got started. Matt has a company called School Spirit Vending. I'll, I'll give you a chance in a minute to tell the audience what School Spirit Vending is. But talk to me about how you started. I, I believe it was with your daughter and a gumball machine. What's that story? Yeah. So I had a good buddy of mine in church that mentioned that he and his young daughters had gotten a couple of gumball machines. And it was at a time where money was real tight. I had had um, some decisions made at the corporate level that impacted my family big time. And we were in a huge hole financially. I, I got to a point, Ash, where I was turned down for a payday loan to give wow. you an idea. Now, you don't have to have a credit rating to get a payday loan. Right. <laughs> but you do have to have a bank statement that doesn't have any overdraft fees. And the month prior, I had three overdraft charges at $35 a piece. And mm -hmm. so that the guys, you know, at the, the, loan place turned me down you know talk about being in a bad place talk about being dejected not being able to provide you know the money i needed for that bill or whatever so i started doing some stuff about it and originally we collected aluminum cans um, we sold books online through amazon and ebay and alibris and half.com my garage looked like a library for a while with as many aisles <laughs> of books that we had purchased and then the whole idea of gumball machines came up at church. And I had read Robert Kiyosaki's book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Uh, I trust most of your listeners have read it. If they haven't, they need to, to get that book because it Absolutely. completely changed my thought process about money and how it gets made. And, and assets and what liabilities are and knowing when not to think a liability as an asset. I, I agree. That was a, a book that I read several years ago that really helped cement my idea of what wealth is and how to generate it. Yeah. And I, after reading his book, you know, he did it in real estate. And at the time, I couldn't even afford to own my own house, let alone, you know, buy rental properties or whatever. So I was looking for a way that I could do it in an affordable way, but still benefit from that whole idea. So gumball machines made total sense because once the machine is placed, it's the machine doing all the selling, not not me. And so I got educated on the industry, bought a couple ebooks on Amazon had about $100 that I could put into this thing to start with. And I found a used candy and gumball machine online on eBay. It was across Houston where we were living at, at the time, so I didn't even have to pay for shipping. And I loaded up my two oldest kids in my 98 Honda Accord one Saturday morning and drove across town to pick up that machine. The guy was willing to share with me a little bit of what he had done, and I had come across a Yahoo group that, uh, I was also able to learn some things from along the way. And the following Monday, I got after it trying to figure out how to get that machine out in a local area business. And, and what, a, what a great experience for your children as well. I just ironically, a gumball machine was one of the first businesses that I ran. I mean, granted, it was just in my room as a child. Maybe I was seven or eight years old. And this was like my prized possession. You know, yeah, back then, this was in the in the ni early 90s. Maybe you had a tape player. You had that Michael Jackson thriller tape that you loved. But for me, it was a gumball machine, and I held the key to the gumball machine. So I could go in at any time and get all the gumballs I wanted out of it, but knowing that these were gumballs that my friends in my 
neighborhood weren't going to be able to purchase. So it was cutting. I knew at that young age that it was cutting into my profits. How many gumballs did I need to sell in order to refill my gumball machine? You know, I had all this stuff written down and I knew exactly those numbers. But I like to think, Matt, that in a more free society, one that we're not forced to pay for public schools and, you know, it's a more of a free market, just like we don't want government to run all of our restaurants. Why should we want government to run all of our schools? I like to think in a freer society, that relationship between the parent and the child would be where a lot of this knowledge, this entrepreneurial knowledge would be passed down. You're a good example of this. Ash, we actually homeschool, which is really kind of ironic when you think about it. So we've taken that to a total extreme. Uh, my oldest, Zane, is just about to turn 20. He's uh, uh, a sophomore in college today. And my second daughter, Sarah, is about to turn 18, and she'll be a freshman this uh, fall. Both have been raised up as homeschool kids from the very beginning. We'll have one left in the house, Rebecca, who's got a couple more years of high school. But anyway, so we've taken that to an extreme. And, you know, my whole thought process all, all along the way is, you know, I'd much rather have my kids learn my bad habits than somebody else's. And who's to say that what the government schools say is is required for success in life right. is right. You know, society is changing so quickly and and these huge bureaucratic organizations, unfortunately, are, are going to get just left in the dust. It's yeah. one of the reasons why our country today is where it is, is because our educational system is not fleet of foot like everything else in society is. Yeah. And change is happening more rapidly than ever. And we've got to be willing to embrace that and utilize the technologies and whatever out there to make sure that our kids and the next generations are prepared. Yeah, well, first off, thank you so much for homeschooling your children. I didn't even know this whenever I brought you on the show. I think that that is such a special bond whenever you can spend all day with your children, especially well, you're an entrepreneur. You know, you have you have machines, gumball machines, and we'll, we'll get into the school vending machines, but you have these machines that basically you've understood how to set them up. You've understood your market, and now you've delegated the work to the machines. I watched your promo video right before this interview. Sometimes you only need to go in one or two days a month to, you know, collect the cash, refill the machine, make sure it's not damaged and take inventory. But what a incredible opportunity for you to bond with your children this way. Yeah, you said you'd rather them learn your bad habits than someone else's. But what about all of the, the great things that you can teach them? What about all the knowledge that you have that you've learned from just your time on earth and building business and, and all the experiences that you have? Why not teach them that stuff? Why send them away to sit in a row where they're still writing on a chalkboard? Well, maybe it's a whiteboard these days, but whether writing on a whiteboard, listening to someone who maybe you haven't even met, what experience do they have? The experience, the trust is going to be from them learning from you, Matt. I think it's, I think it's wonderful. You know, we, Ash, we moved out into the country five and a half years ago when I stepped away from my corporate job and, and we started doing SSV full time. And one of the main reasons for that is because when we were living in the city of Houston in one of the suburbs, you know, it's hot down there. It's humid. Nobody goes outside during the day in the summer. And we had a puny little postage stamp yard in the rental house that we had. Well, we moved out into the country because we wanted to kind of develop our own homestead to become more self-sufficient along the way. I've always loved gardening. So we have a huge vegetable garden. We raise chickens, ducks, geese, hogs on occasion, and, um, you know, fruit and nut trees and all that. The goal being to bring them out here to teach them real world skills and to teach them as best as we can a work ethic. And man, it is so awesome to have been able to provide that opportunity for them here and um, for them to have that real world experience that is, is being lost in so many sectors of our society today. If people are, have been exposed to it ever at all. Oftentimes I've wondered if one of the main issues that we have is since so many children go to public schools, they don't have the experience in thinking creatively about how to offer goods and services to their fellow people, their fellow man, I guess their children to their fellow child. 
as a libertarian or an, an anarchist, I hear all the time, but who will build the roads? And I've thought all ways about how the roads could be built, but now my answer is, I, I'm not exactly sure. How would you build the roads? Or, or how would you offer f- clean water to people? Or it, it's this pain solving that is essential to being a good entrepreneur. You, this is what pulls me into the energy of entrepreneurship and just the entrepreneur mentality is that we are problem solvers. We think we see problems in the world. And yes, government is one way that we can get problems solved. Yes, we have roads. I'm sure it's very difficult to flatten out land and pour some asphalt on it. You know, while entrepreneurs are actually building skyscrapers and building computers and like, like you, figuring out pains and solving them. Let's, let's transition into school vending machines, Matt, and tell me how the gumball, your gumball machines turned into a much bigger project. Well, it was 07 and 08. The economy had tanked. There was a lot less people going out to my traditional vending machines. And I was frustrated because I had put a lot of time into building that. And once again, I wanted to get free. I wanted to be able to do my own thing and work for myself exclusively. Well, had a number of kids from the local school come by knocking on my door one, uh, well, I guess it was over a couple of weeks' time, selling stuff, fundraising for the school. And I thought that was odd because I didn't know any of the kids and their parents weren't with them. We were in a suburb of Houston and, you know, you can't help by but be impacted by the sensationalism of the media every day. Yeah, I don't know that our society is any more dangerous today than it was when you and I were growing up, Ash. But the reality is we're, we're led to believe that it is because that's all we see on the news. So to think of my kids at, well, that were similar age at the time, out door to door, without my wife or I with us, just uh, we couldn't even fathom that. So yep. I was like, okay, maybe I can do something in the schools which would get some kids off the street, but it would also allow us to have machines where the kids are five days a week, nine months out of the year, so that if mom and dad aren't frequenting that restaurant quite as much, that's okay because little Johnny and little Susie are going to see my machine every day anyway. So that's where the whole idea came from. I had been in print media for the previous, you know, six or seven years at that point in time. So I had the basic knowledge of print. I had um, worked with graphic designers for years and had learned how to tell them what I needed to have put together to put ads together and what have you. So it was just a matter of figuring out how to print stickers and then apply what I had learned previously to the customization of those stickers for the individual schools. So that's where the whole idea came from. Originally, we were thinking high school kids and all that, but later found out that the older kids really didn't interact with what we do, but the younger ones did. So we pivoted, and and most of our work today is done at the younger level. But um, yeah, we found that we filled a huge need, the lack of volunteers out there today that are available because both parents are working in most households. Um, You know, our program was a perfect fit. Little did we know how many schools would see the benefit of it and, and want to be a part. I think it's really interesting, Matt, that you found the high school kids weren't, weren't very interested in what you were doing because this is a school spirit vending. So I, I assume that it's mascots and stickers and initials of your school and stuff like that. Yeah. So part of it is we also offer up other, you know, more generic product that the kids love. But yes, foundational to all we do is the custom stickers for that individual school. Right. And I could see this grow into maybe pencils or pens or little notebooks with like we were the blue devils in school, you know, a, a, a little notebook with a blue devil icon on the top of it or something. I, I would have definitely have bought something like that whenever I was going through my public school education. But to give the children an opportunity to choose what they want to do with their quarter or their 50 cents, you know, do I want to buy a pencil? Do I want to buy ice cream at lunch? Do I want that extra milk or do I want to go to the school spirit vending machine and buy a, a sticker or to buy a notepad or to buy something? You know, it gives the children an opportunity to make decisions with their own money. And 
deal with the consequences. Oh, well, now I wish I'd had that ice cream, but you know, I bought an extra piece of pizza. Or I wish I'd have got that Blue Devil sticker, but I bought that ice cream instead. It's a good learning opportunity for the children. And I really feel what you're saying about keeping kids from going door to door. And I don't know if society is any worse than it was whenever we were growing up, but you're definitely right. The sensationalism of the media is there. And I can remember going door to door and my mom lecturing me sternly before I went door to door, don't go in anyone's houses, you know, don't get invited in to drink lemonade or something like that, unless you know the people. And luckily I grew up in the country as well. We knew a lot of our neighbors. It wasn't that, it wasn't that scary, but Schools obviously need funding. They need they would need funding if they're government schools or if they're private schools. And what you did was you centralized that funding. And I assume that you've got deals with different schools where they get a, a cut of the profits made on the vending machines. Is that how the, the funding programs work? Yeah, we've got a revenue share with them. And so we we do all the work and then they just have a, a, a check that they cash you know, each time we service throughout the year. So let's chat about the franchising program that you have. How did how did you get into just running an individual machine or a couple machines into franchising this? What's wild, Ash, is very quickly after we started putting machines in schools and having the success that we did, we had people coming out of the woodwork that I knew wanting to be part of what we did. And so initially we set up a licensing agreement and a distributorship model where we taught people the basics of what we did and and in exchange you know got a small piece of what they did uh, for continuing to provide support and and the idea and the training well that model lasted for about seven seven and a half years and my good friend Aaron Walker who's my coach you Aaron actually introduced us at podcast movement he challenged me on kind of the direction we were heading about 18 months ago. And he said, you know, Matt, I'm excited what you guys have accomplished in the last seven years, but do you have any idea how many schools are out there that you're not in yet? And the only reason why you're not is they don't know who you are. So if I were you, I'd get busy figuring out a way how to get the word out to those schools. Well, did a bunch of research, how best to do that, et cetera. And really the answer to it all was continuing to grow the size of of our team. Our team had kind of grown organically through word of mouth and friends and family and all that for seven years. But, you know, most of the team was in the southern part of the country as an example, et cetera, just because that's kind of where we all congregated and and where whoever referred us came from. So I realized after doing some looking around that the marketing and all that was going to be cost prohibitive. And talked to my lawyer to find out what options were. And at that point in time, he said, you know, Matt, if you want to do business in the Northeast, if you want to do business in California and out West, you really probably need to be a franchise because the laws in those states are much more uh, stringent. There's a lot more bureaucracy you got to deal with. And so that began the process of, of putting a franchise together. And, and so we've been franchising now for a little over a year. So our team in the last six months has grown about 50% and we're on track to grow about 100% year over year just in this 12-month period of time. And what we're finding, Ash, is there are a ton of people out there that have a desire to have more freedom for themselves, are in most cases wildly successful in their careers, but they're not satisfied. And we provide an alternative, an alternative that requires a minimum time commitment to do, an alternative that where family involvement is highly encouraged. In fact, family is our foundation, is one of the mantras that we live by. And in the process, you know, teach folks how to own a business, how to do it passively without conflicting with whatever they do full time and to give their kids that exposure that we talked about already at a much earlier age. I didn't start business until I was in my late 20s. I didn't start SSV until I was 40. So for kids on our team to be getting exposure, you know, in in their teens or even younger, and to get that head start is, is huge in my mind. And the goal is to help raise up multi-generational businesses and to give these kids a leg up um, because they're side by side, hand in hand with mom and dad, 
as they build a business together. Absolutely. For anyone out there interested in franchising, I just released a podcast not too long ago about uh, a girl who is franchising ATM machines, Bitcoin ATM machines, cryptocurrency ATM machines. And so I'm picking up, this is very common whenever you figure out how to run a business and then you need to scale the business, franchising is a good way to do it. What type of time commitment and financial commitment would you expect someone to have in order to become a franchiser of your uh, school spirit vending machines? Time commitment, I put this thing together early on a couple days a month. Now, we work in and out of the school, so obviously those couple days a month need to be during school hours. But a lot of the marketing and a lot of uh, what we do can be done at night and, and on the weekends via email and traditional mailing and, and all that kind of stuff. So it doesn't take a ton of time. Now, I did have to make some decisions along the way and, you know, maybe not go on vacation a couple of years so that I had, you know, the vacation time to do what I needed to do. And a lot of our team is transitioning towards putting this thing together with the team from the very beginning to where, in many cases, they hire somebody to run their routes and that type of thing. But that's an individual decision based on resources of time and money that, that is of course different for everybody on the month. And how about, go ahead. How, how about the setup time? How long does it take to, you know, if I wanted, if I was like, okay, Matt, I want to get this going today. How, how long would it be till I was operational? Well, we have about a six week or so, uh, interview process where we spend time getting to know the prospect of franchisee, them getting to know us, making sure every last question they could ever possibly have is answered. The government has what's called the franchise disclosure document that we are required to present to them. And they have a minimum of two weeks or 14 days that they have to review that before anything formal can be done. But once all that's taken care of, we've got a one day um, full on hands on training here in Texas that folks come to in order to learn the basics of what we do. We've got an online training course called SSV University, which kind of supplements the, the in person uh, hands on stuff. So, literally, depending on the timing of when folks get all that done, you know, a couple of weeks they could be out doing their thing. And mm. depending on the time of the year and, and who we talk to, you know, there's many folks that, that are picking up schools within a day or two, definitely within a couple of weeks after they get out and kind of sharing what we do. Um, we've got this down to a science, Ash, to where, you know, the distance between point A and point B is significantly shorter for somebody new today than it was for us. It took me six, seven years to get where these guys are able to get in a matter of uh, six months to a year because they don't have to make all the mistakes that we made as long as they're willing to listen. We also have a podcast that we offer. Um, about a year ago, I started that show. It, it ends up being two different episodes a week. It is niche just sure. for our franchisees. So it's a private podcast. I interview franchisees and we share success stories and successes and failures and best practices. Mm. And then I bring in outside experts as well to share their expertise where it makes sense um, for our team. Um, since most of our team in the last year has come from podcasts, they're already in the podcast listening mode. So for them to, to you know, start listening to the SSV radio show just makes total sense for them. And it's providing them once again, right. a, a collective memory of over a year now that they can go back and access and, and be able to ramp things up that much quicker as they learn from those that have been around for a while. Yeah. It sounds like you've really put a full package together here, Matt. You've got you know the types of machines that work. You know the types of products that you can sell in the machines. You've already figured out the pitch for the schools and the benefit that the schools get from this. You can tell them how it keeps the children from having to go door to door while still giving them options, neat options to buy and sell stuff. It provides revenue for the schools. 
you've given them the the training courses you know they, they can come to texas and have the training course with you the guy that invented all of this so they don't have to reinvent the wheel they just need to strap on and go for the ride you've got the podcast which is a wealth of information that's how you and i met at the podcasting convention but you've you offer a podcast where you stay up to date with the questions, concerns, success stories, possible failures from the people who franchise with you. I mean, that's, that is unbelievable. That's an unbelievable amount of information that you're organizing and sharing because you want your franchisees. Is that what they're called? Franchisees? Yes. Okay. You want your franchisees to be successful because if they're not successful, then you're going to put this time and this money into trying to get them up to speed. Like you said, it took you seven years to do this. It could take them six months because they get to piggyback on your knowledge, but you're on the same team. You have the same goals. And I think you're doing a great job, Matt, on getting all of your wealth of knowledge together and keep it up to date. That's the thing in the content creation world, it's easy to want to create, you know, a guide or something and put it out there and never really update it. But you've got a twice a week podcast. And let me tell you people, I have a once a week podcast right now. And it's already a ton of work. I can't imagine what a twice a week podcast costs time wise. But you offer this information to help people be successful, so that they can create and build their own free life. Matt, I think it's I think it's terrific. I'm really grateful to Aaron for putting us together and introducing me to you. Is there any, any contact information or how can my listeners get in touch with you? Yeah, Ash, I actually wrote a short ebook. It's called live your dreams, the top 10 reasons why you need to own a vending business. And it talks just some basics and shares some insights that I've gained over the last you know, 10, 12 years that I've been involved in vending. Most professionals don't look at vending as a real business because they see a quarter as not being real money. But just to give you an idea, we've sold 32 million stickers in the last eight years. Um, that's a lot of wow, quarters. That is a lot of quarters. And that adds up. We've raised over $4 million for education during that period wow. of time. So, I guess my point is I encourage your audience to check it out because I think they will be surprised. And uh, if they want to talk more about the franchise, I'd be happy to talk with them about it. Otherwise, if they just want the insights and and maybe, you know, look into just general vending, um, it'll give them some insights as well. But they can go to ssvbusiness.com forward slash liberty and download that for free. And we can just go from there. And that's ssvbusiness.com forward slash liberty. You can go there and download Matt's free ebook, which is going to really catch you up to speed and let you know what type of opportunities could be available for you if this is something that you're interested in. Um, Matt, how else can they get in touch with you? Do you have email or Twitter or Facebook? Uh, I'm on Twitter, Ash. It's at ssvbusiness. Uh, email is matt at ssvbusiness.com. And we've got a Facebook page as well, SSV Business. So a multitude of ways they can reach out. And, uh, man, just appreciate the opportunity to be on your show and get a chance to share. It's cool to, to get a chance with somebody that has a like mind on, on so many levels and, uh, and get a chance to share a little bit of our experience along the way. Absolutely. Well, like I've said, nobody's going to build freedom for you, so it's time for you to act, and that's exactly what you did, Matt. Thank you so much for coming on the show, and best of luck. Thanks, Ash. God bless you. You just listened to episode 43, Building a Vending Machine Empire, with my guest, Matt Miller. I bet you never thought about vending machines as a business idea, have you? Well, Matt did it, and so can you. Good news is that you don't need to reinvent the wheel, and Matt's excited to help you get started building your own vending machine business today. If this is something you're interested in, then simply reach out to him at www.ssvbusiness.com forward slash liberty and start creating the lifestyle that you want. Please rate us on iTunes and YouTube. Links are in the show notes. I can't even explain how much it helps. I need more reviews. If you like the type of material I'm putting out and you find it valuable, please take three minutes and go review. And until next time, keep building freedom.
Welcome to the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast, where we explore how to build freedom through the entrepreneurial process. Our goal is to provide you with the tools and mindset needed to create your lifestyle of independence and flexibility. I'm your host, Ash Whitener, and this is episode 43, Building a Vending Machine Empire, with my guest, Matt Miller, founder and president of School Spirit Vending. Matt comes from the corporate world, but it never satisfied him. Selling his time to someone else just didn't seem like freedom, and he always wanted to be his own boss. One day, a good friend told him about a gumball machine that he recently purchased, which was generating passive income and actually helping to pay his bills. At the time, Matt wasn't doing financially well and decided to take a closer look. That conversation has turned into a 10-year business quest that has helped Matt create a multi-million dollar vending machine business and allowed him to create the lifestyle that he used to only dream of. I was looking for something more and I wanted to have more control of my time and over my finances. Tune in to learn how Matt spent only $100 and was able to create a successful vending machine business, which now only takes a few days per week to maintain. Also, you don't want to miss the part where Matt and I discuss the importance of teaching children entrepreneurship at a young age and why Matt chose to bring his daughters along that day he finally decided to buy his first vending machine, a simple gumball machine. Homeschooling gives children insights which public schools simply cannot, and we join Matt on his experiences and journey. Would you like to become an entrepreneur and start building your own lifestyle of flexibility and independence? Are you tired of working for the man every single week in your nine to five job? If so, head on over to our website and subscribe to the weekly newsletter. I'll send you every week our latest interview with a fellow Liberty entrepreneur who is building the lifestyle that he or she chooses, not the lifestyle that chose them. Also, keep up with us on social media by following us on Twitter at Liberty E Podcast and Facebook slash Liberty Entrepreneurs. Show notes are found on our website, libertyentrepreneurs.com, and I hope you enjoy the show. I'm very pleased today to welcome Matt Miller. Matt, thank you so much. Thanks for having me on, Ash. Just uh, excited to be here. Yeah, so I recently met Matt at the Podcast Movement 2016 conference in Chicago, Illinois. That was my first time at that conference, and wow, let me tell you, it was a little bit overwhelming. I had never been around so many podcasters. I had never seen so many microphones in people's faces, and just the energy of that po- that conference was amazing. Matt, was that, have you been to that before? Yeah, I got a chance to go to the one in Fort Worth last year, being that it was just up the road from us about an hour and a half. And man, it changed my life. I mean, that's where I really got turned on to to being a podcaster and also, you know, kind of spreading our message uh, via podcasts as well. And uh, so, yeah, great group of people, incredible value as far as information. But talk about a diverse group of people, too. Wow. Man. I mean, sure. any topic you could possibly think of, they were there um, sharing. And, uh, so it was really neat to get a chance to shake hands and, and get a chance to know a bunch of, a bunch of, uh, you know, new folks. Yeah. It's so amazing. One of the lines that someone said that caught my attention was if there's not a podcast about your passion, then create it because there are literally podcasts about everything. We heard a guy that had a podcast about porn addiction of all things, right? There, there are people out there looking for this content. I walked away just being absolutely amazed by how much high quality content is being generated every single day. And it's available for free. It's amazing. Podcasting is is absolutely the future of audio media. You know, nobody listens to the radio anymore, and we are the future. So, Matt, it's such an interesting place to meet you. I'd like to jump into the theme of my show, which is Liberty Entrepreneurs: How to Build Your Own Personal Freedom. And this resonates deeply with what your philosophy is as well, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, I was the career guy for over 20 years, and 
you know, that's all I had ever been taught when I was, when I grew up, my parents were teachers and, and I had always followed that, you know, go to work, get a good education, get a good job and you'll be taken care of. And of course, as many of us know now, that paradigm has completely changed. But the mindset of most people, in my opinion, around the country has not changed. So most people are still putting all their eggs in that one basket. And, you know, I got done wrong enough times, Ash, to where I finally got fed up with it all. And I was grateful for the opportunity, grateful for the chance to, you know, provide for my family in the method and, the, and in the means that a, a career like that does. But I was looking for something more and I wanted to have more control of my time and over, over my finances and, you know, working for somebody else, you know, whenever they're signing the check on the front and you're having to sign it on the back, you know, there's always going to be limitations. And I chose to become the guy in the front instead of the one on the back. Yeah. So let's go back to the beginning because it's a very interesting story how you got started. Matt has a company called School Spirit Vending. I'll I'll give you a chance in a minute to tell the audience what School Spirit Vending is. But talk to me about how you started. I I believe it was with your daughter and a gumball machine. What's that story? Yeah. So I had a good buddy of mine in church that mentioned that he and his young daughters had gotten a couple of gumball machines. And it was at a time where money was real tight. I had had Um, some decisions made at the corporate level that impacted my family big time. And we were in a huge hole financially. I I got to a point, Ash, where I was turned down for a payday loan to give you an idea. Now, you don't have to have a credit rating to get a payday loan. Right. (laughs) But you do have to have a bank statement that doesn't have any overdraft fees. And the month prior, I had three overdraft charges at $35 a piece. And Mm -hmm. so that the guys, you know, at the, the, loan place turned me down you know talk about being in a bad place talk about being dejected not being able to provide you know the money i needed for that bill or whatever so i started doing some stuff about it and originally we collected aluminum cans um we sold books online through amazon and ebay and alibris and half.com my garage looked like a library for a while with as many (laughs) aisles of books that we had purchased And then the whole idea of gumball machines came up at church. And I had read Robert Kiyosaki's book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Uh, I trust most of your listeners have read it. If they haven't, they need to to get that book because it completely changed my thought process about money and how it gets made. And And, and assets and what liabilities are and knowing when not to think a liability is an asset. I, I agree. That was a book that I read several years ago that really helped cement my idea of what wealth is and how to generate it. Yeah. And I, after reading his book, you know, he did it in real estate. And at the time I couldn't even afford to own my own house, let alone, you know, buy rental properties or whatever. So I was looking for a way that I could do it in an affordable way, but still benefit from that whole idea. So gumball machines made total sense because once the machine was placed, it's the machine doing all the selling, not not me. And so I got educated on the industry, bought a couple ebooks on Amazon, had about a hundred dollars that I could put into this thing to start with. And I found a used candy and gumball machine online on eBay. It was across Houston where we were living at to- at the time, so I didn't even have to pay for shipping. And I loaded up my two oldest kids in my ninety eight Honda Accord one Saturday morning and drove across town to pick up that machine. The guy was willing to share with me a little bit of what he had done, and I had come across a Yahoo group that uh, I was also able to learn some things from along the way. And the following Monday, I got after it trying to figure out how to get that machine out in a local area business. And, and what a what a great experience for your children as well. I just ironically, a gumball machine was one of the first businesses that I ran. I mean, granted, it was just in my room as a child. Maybe I was seven or eight years old. And this was like my prized possession. You know, yeah, back then, this was in the in the ni- early 90s. Maybe you had a tape player. You had that Michael Jackson thriller tape that you loved. But for me, it was a gumball machine. And I held the key to the gumball machine. So I could go in at any time and get all the gumballs I wanted out of it. But knowing that these were gumballs that my friends in my 
neighborhood weren't going to be able to purchase. So it was cutting. I knew at that young age that it was cutting into my profits. How many gumballs did I need to sell in order to refill my gumball machine? You know, I had all this stuff written down and I knew exactly those numbers. But I like to think, Matt, that in a more free society, one that we're not forced to pay for public schools and, you know, it's a more of a free market 